film. What film are we talking about? Oh, it stars um, Stanley Tucci, Jeremy Irons, Zachary Quinto, Paul Bettany, um, Penn Badgley. Is it Penn Badgley or the other guy from Gossip Girl? I'm deliberately avoiding the fact that it has Kevin Spacey in it. But yes, it is. Oh, Demi Moore, so true. It is Penn Badgley. It's called Margin Call. I would highly suggest watching it. It's boring, and that's what makes it so good. This shit is pissing me off. Sorry, it was like two minutes into the video. Demonetized. Son of a... <laughs> not de it's not demonetized. It's not demonetized. The ads are just limited. Limited to zero because nobody's advertising for adult products on YouTube gaming videos. Thanks a lot. Oh, because some people can't handle the F word. It's literally something that everybody says in their own house. I'll just go ahead and say it. If you don't have kids and you live with another adult that's like your age and you don't swear, you are the weird ones. The swearers are not the weird ones. If you're 26 and your spouse is 26 and you're like, I had a freaking crap day at work today, honey then you're the weirdo, okay? The people who were like, I had a shit day at work, it was fucked up, those are normal people. I already know if you said, I had a fricktacular day, oh, the suckage was out of control, you're wearing khakis with like a, a old navy belt that you got, and then you got a white button-up shirt tucked in and short sleeves. I know you got a short sleeve button-up tucked into the khakis, okay? So don't tell me that the F word is unmonetizable. Anyway, I'm procrastinating. So I don't know like what country makes $204,000 of plastic housewares every year. So we're going to play this one like geographically styled. Um, I would like to congratulate Dan for completing the, the password game. It's quite the... It's quite the ordeal. If, if you're watching the dulls, either on Twitch or on YouTube, and you didn't see me play the password game, you might not understand. The password game is quite the... Um, it's a Herculean task. I would definitely recommend it. Maybe you've been procrastinating on the VOD because it's three hours long, but I'm telling you, it's worth watching. It's worth putting on in the background. Anyway... Non Dan Raiders who didn't get timed out for 600 seconds because Dan's password was 400 characters long. Um, do you know a country that produces $4.47 million of non filleted frozen fish annually? It has to be a small nation. It is probably an island or a very small region on a coast, but it, probably an island just because islands tend to be smaller than coastal countries. You can run the fact check on that. I'm pretty sure it's true. I, I bet we're in the South Pacific. I'm just going to say it's Kiribati, and we'll, we'll start from there. Oh, no. <laughs> How can something be 11,000 kilometers south of Kiribati? Isn't that like around the North Pole? Is this in Europe? Is this... The only place in Europe that makes sense is the, the Faroe Islands, but those are administered by like Denmark, right? Or Norway? Faroe Islands? The Faroes? $11 million is like such a small amount of exports for a whole nation. I gotta think. Like, there's no way it's not gonna be Liechtenstein. A, it's landlocked. B, like, Liechtenstein's at least gonna cross a billy. Just to export like, you know, two gold bars annually or something. I, I'm stunned. I have no idea. I'm wondering if it could be a small... <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. Uh, plastic? Like this is... It's actually worse than if it was just in the South Pacific. It's almost the entire world away. Is Kiribati in the South Pacific? <laughs> Could this be in like the 
the Atlantic, like the Caribbean, kind of. Like, I'm. This may be a an idiotic guess, but I'm gonna guess Dominica and just at least get like a. Oh no. <laughs> It's the South Pole. It's Antarctica. Antarctica. I'm just going to be real with you. I don't even know where Netherlands or Antilles is, which makes me think that this could be... No, all right. Apparently, it's right next to Dominica. I have no idea. Is it Wallace and Fatuna? Is it... Well, it's got to be one of the things the Beach Boys said in the song, right? Christmas Island. Nothing can be south of Christmas Island. Like, I'm sorry. It's this is going to be like um, it's going to be a country with like a hundred thousand residents. I actually have no idea. I already guessed Kiribati, Vanuatu. I, I don't even, this is the first time in Tradle that I'm like, this is another planet. Like, this doesn't exist on the Earth. Is it Madagascar? <laughs> it's not Madagascar. French Southern Territories? That's France! It literally says French in the, in the title. That doesn't seem fair. Or maybe, you know, I should always be happy that we lose a tradal because it teaches you something about the world. Like, now I know that it's Wallace and Fatuna. That's literally Antarctica? Okay, I feel better. I feel better because I at least said Antarctica. But technically, Antarctica is a continent that doesn't, it's not administrated as like one distinct entity. Norway's also like we got a claim on it and freaking like America's like us too doesn't even make any sense okay Globla hey hey what do you mean it doesn't make any sense we made McMurdo Station it's a joint effort internationally you piece just cause Kurt Russell was there in the thing doesn't mean it belongs to America France. It's not very close to France. Can I get a Bahrain? Not very close to Bahrain either, quite frankly. What about South Sudan? That's colder. Okay. Maybe we're looking up here then. What about Afghanistan? It's much warmer. 2,000 kilometers away from Afghanistan. What about uh, Turkmenistan? That's cooler. Good to know. Okay, that's, that's very good to know. How about a... 2,000 kilometers? Would I be insane to say Sri Lanka? That's even warmer, but it's still 1,600 kilometers. How about a Bangladesh? How about a Nepal? Oh, okay. How about a Thailand? Oh, <laughs> how about Myanmar? Hey, okay, okay. Absolutely no disrespect to Myanmar. But you guys know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking about? That's, that's my entire understanding of my... All of my knowledge of Myanmar is the lady doing aerobics while the government military coup happens in the background of her video feed. But she is fucking killing it, by the way. It was Zumba? Might be Zumba. Okay, wait, we gotta do Worldle. 
Worldle. Okay, I appreciate getting kind of a gimme. So I'm pretty sure, has it always been this small? Pretty sure this is India. <laughs> yes! Italy and India in the same week. It's a very blessed week for Worldla. Okay. Box office game. Walt Disney, 56 milli, 2015. This shit is Captain America Civil War. No, 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 no. Second week, 24 million, no shot. This is going to be an animated movie. This is going to be like a primo on an animated movie. Science fiction action adventure, never mind. I'll take a star. I hate to do it, but I'll take a star. Paul Rudd. It's MN1. Wow, MN1. It's uh, 100 million in two weeks is pretty, I mean, subpar for a Marvel's. But you know what? It's, you, you need some revisionist history. Wait, or maybe the opposite. Because Ant-Man 1 was kind of like, even though it's not a great MCU movie, for me, it's kind of the start of being excited about the Infinity War saga. Like, this is this to me is where the MCU geared up and started going like, okay, okay. Hello, Daniel, hello. So maybe this gross, like, makes sense. Had horrible legs, though. Sony Pictures opened to 24 milli. Pretty subpar opening for the summer. Definitely not anything too impressive. Actor is Adam Sandler pre-Netflix deal. I'm going to guess it's a comedy. Call this maybe Grown Ups 2. Tagline. Game on. This is Pixels. I should have gotten that without spending the extra 40 points. But fair enough. Okay, that's Pixels. Fair enough. Universal 262 milli week 3. Jurassic World. Really? Genre? Okay, family animation adventure comedy starring Sandra Bullock. I have no idea. Tagline. Before Gru, they had a history of bad bosses. It's literally just minions. Okay. I'm not familiar with the minions oeuvre, so I'll, I'll just take the L on that one. I played a little Despicable Me Minions Rush for uh, Champions of Fire 2. I had a perfect run and lost somehow. So I'm not completely familiar with the scoring system of the game, apparently, but uh, made sense to the organizers. Universal, 61 milli week two, starring Amy Schumer. This will be Trainwreck. I went to bat for this movie because I always like to see a comedy that has 90% plus on Rotten Tomatoes. I watched the first three minutes of it on an airplane and just said I can't do it. And I watched all of Bros on an airplane, okay? But I just, the, the opening of this movie, just, oh my God, <laughs> I just, I can't. I can't do the, the Amy Schumer voice. I, I'm sorry, I can't do it. No disrespect, Bill Hader. Anyway, I turned it off because I was like, this is just fucking, it's just offensive, but not in a funny way. I'm not doing the voice. And The Weinstein Company, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. 2015, could be Nightcrawler. Not a movie you'd expect to crush it at the box office. Cult classic afterwards. Um, could be End of Watch. Give me a tagline. Believe in hope. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, actor 2. Rachel McAdams, no clue. Give me reveal all hints. Billy the Great Hope, the reigning junior middleweight boxing champion, has a, when tragedy strikes, Billy hits rock bottom. Sounds like a country music song. He soon finds an unlikely savior in Tick Willis, a former fighter. When his future is on the line, Hope fights to reclaim the trust of those he loves most. I do not know it. That is Southpaw. I know the fighter. I'm familiar with the fighter. 
pretty good movie. Well, sorry, it was produced by the Weinstein Company, so you're canceled. I would say this is a week at the multiplex where you can definitely skip. For me personally, I don't think... I mean, I, I like Ant-Man. I think Ant-Man is fun. But I think otherwise, you could probably... If you're watching this as a time traveler somehow and you're in... It's, it's July 24th, 2015. Stay home. Just stay home. You don't need to see any of this stuff. I'm sure you just... 2015, go eat at a restaurant. You know? Why? You'll understand in a few years. You'll, in a few years, you'll be like, I'm glad he told me to eat at a restaurant. It's good advice, okay? That you just did and take. And who would have thought... By the way, Cine 2 Nerdle today, average score 3.6 out of 5. That's scary, man. That's a scary one. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night is the Truman Show. Holy cow. And then I see that there is Good Morning Vietnam. Good morning, Vietnam. Just everybody, give me a second, which is also war. Wait a minute, this is messed up. Oh, wait, wait, hang on. Good luck, Chuck. Good night, good luck, McCarthy is George Clooney, right? And then good afternoon, good evening, good night is a uh, comedy. That's the Truman Show. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> Good morning, Vietnam War. Yeah, okay. Hang on. Good. We need good luck, Chuck. This is a real... No wonder today's is hard. Good luck, Chuck is a comedy... This is really... Like, this is a cursed one today. Good afternoon, good evening, good night. Good morning, good morning. But first, this is the tough one. Let me get good luck, Chuck. Which is a comedy. Hot swap these bad boys right there. Then give me... I'm, I'm very confused. <laughs> Green is always the connector. Okay, we'll rebuild the connector. We got eight swaps. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. Good evening. <laughs> it's Truman Show. Good luck and good night, George Clooney. Okay, we got four swaps left. Get ready. This is our connector. There is good morning, Vietnam. Via this. <laughs> and then... I mean, with only two swaps, it's like, don't you just hot swap them? But what the heck is Chuck good evening? I think we got decoyed today. Yeah, I, th I think I got decoyed today. One swap left. Sean Penn, Terrence Malick, George Clooney, War. Oh. <laughs> what did I get? Four? Apparently, I got five, but I only got four. Wait, you got it? Oh, never mind. I'm the best ever. You got them all. Two fakes. How, oh, you know what? I got saved because I never put together Tom Cruise and Steven Spielberg with war, which would have been War of the Worlds. And I would have been like, where's Alien? Where's Alien? Where's Alien? Did Dane Cook play the Alien? Okay, we got there, which was surprising to even me. Then we got reversal.
anime films. Akira the Animatrix, Ghost in the Shell, Isle of Dogs. Which is also... Paprika? <laughs> uh, hang on. Westerns. Django Unchained for a few dollars more, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. And Rango. Wes Anderson Films. Asteroid City, Isle of Dogs, Grand Budapest Hotel. Okay, movies with Mickey Rourke. Iron Man 2, I want my bird. I want my bird. And then Paprika must be an anime. This completes the Wes Anderson trifecta. All right, now. Ah, ah, do I see? Yes, I do see something. Um, on uh, Anthology films. Anthology films. Ballad of Buster Scruggs, Sin City, The Animatrix, and... The Grand Budapest, The French Dispatch. I, I haven't seen a Wes Anderson movie in a long time, though I have respect for him. Mickey Rourke, Wes Anderson, Western, Japanese animation, anthology films. How about that? Average score 4.2, embarrassing. And now the type of guy to say Eureka. <laughs> Shut up. You think I am Archimedes? Okay, now. Two movies I've not seen yet. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse to The Little Mermaid. I think I can get from... I don't know who's in this, okay? I know that the star is Halle Bailey. I don't know what else she's in. I know that David Diggs is in it. I know that Melissa McCarthy is in it. I feel like I can easily get from a heavily ensemble cast like this to Melissa McCarthy. Like there's almost too many actors to choose from. This star-studded cast, man. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. I'm trying to get to Melissa McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy was with Sandra Bullock in The Heat. Sandra Bullock was with every actor and actress in the movie Crash. She was also in Miss Congeniality. She was also in Speed with Keanu Reeves. How does Keanu, Keanu Reeves get you to Jonathan Wick? I'm, I don't know why I'm scrolling. It's not going to get any easier. Well, I don't think it's hard. Like, surely Andy Samberg has been with Melissa McCarthy in a movie. Like, I'm just, I'm going to scroll for a bit. And I, maybe he's a voice actor in something together, but just everyone relax here. Was, he, was Melissa McCarthy in Storks or Hotel Transylvania? There's got to be a way to get to Sandra Bullock, too. Wait, why do I need to get to Sandra Bullock? Shut the fuck up about Sandra Bullock. Melissa McCarthy is in... What's the movie... And I can't... I need to talk through it. I'm not looking at chat. What's the movie where Melissa McCarthy plays a parent, um, but she's, like, at, at her best, which is to say is a cameo, not a starring role... Uh, and the dude says, like, the parent is like, your kid is messing with my kid. And then he just says, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the, f I'll punch you in the mouth. Like, what, what is that movie? That is, this is 40. Okay, hang on, hang on. Because we're getting there now. Because this is 40 is Paul Rudd. So we go to watch Jonah Hill. Any movie that's ever been made with Jonah Hill also has Paul Rudd in it. Paul Rudd for sure is in the 40-year-old virgin, so scroll me down. Scroll me, scroll me, scroll me, scroll me, right there. Paul Rudd. Now, what, what am I doing with Paul Rudd here? That's, I'm getting to this is 40, that's right. Which then takes me to Melissa McCarthy. Which then takes me to The Little Mermaid 2023. Not the shortest possible path, but I got there. I got there. 
And I got there with no resources. You've probably got a fucking Tubi account if you knew that both Haley Steinfeld and Aquafina were in Between Two Ferns, the movie. Your ass has a platinum subscription to CISO, okay? Fair enough. I don't. You got me on that one. <clears throat> Take me to... I'm, I'm still proud of myself. Take me to guess the game. Did you ever see the tweet? I don't know anything about Aquafina. I don't know if I've ever seen her in anything. She's, she's in Shang-Chi for a little bit, right? Or maybe like the whole movie? <laughs> Did you see the tweet and the... Uh, the the start of the tweet is Aquafina's grandma, and then it's a bunch of hangul that translates to please stop saying things that embarrass our family. And then the next quote is Aquafina. It's like, know what I'm talking about? Something like that. You ever see that one? That's a, that's a classic tweet. No, I've never seen that. Farewell's pretty good. I was going to see... The, well, okay, here's, here's what the farewell... My library... Or not library. My story with the, the farewell. One Saturday, pre-kid, um, Kate and I didn't know what to do. I said, hey, do you want to go to the movie theater and see this new movie called The Farewell? Apparently, it's a beloved, uh, heartfelt comedy that's also like a meditation on what it means to be Asian American while also you know, paying homage to your ancestors that, you know, paved the way for you or whatever. And Kate was like, nah. And I said, okay. And I don't know what we did. Probably just went home, if I had to guess. I was, I was in the mood to watch it, but then the, the mood was, it, it was taken from me. <laughs> it's fine. You just want to chill. You can just chill. And then we watched Minari like two years later. Probably Persona 4, if I had to guess. Mm, I would say no. I would say this is Metal Gear Solid 3. Snake Eater? Nope. It's on the Xbox 360. I'd say this is Gears of War 2. i say this is Gears of War 3. Halo Reach. Halo colon reach. Great game. One of my favorites. Just kidding. I was already playing Dark Souls by the time. Well, no, that was like a year late. Well, I was like, I, listen, I remember I came back from Korea. And I, I brought my Xbox over to one of my friends' house. And I think this is where men, you have to choose a path. You don't know when it's happened until it's there 10 years in the past. But I chose a path that day. My friend said, do you want to play Halo Reach together. I said, nah, I've been playing this game called Dark Souls. I'm just going to plug into your uh, Ethernet connection and do like invasions in Undead Parish. And he said, that's cool. He played a bunch of Halo Reach. I played a bunch of Dark Souls invasions. We had a great time and I have not seen him since. We, we, something changed that day and we knew it. Also, like three months after that, I moved across the country and then he had a kid. So like, that's just, it's a pretty normal way for that to go, I think. But you can ascribe more meaning to it if you want. I chose the right path. He chose the wrong path. Not because of the kid, but because of the, the video games. Orcs must die. Cameo and the power elements. What was that one? The Bridge of Spirits. Kenna, the Bridge of Spirits. Fuck you, eat me. I'm the best of all time. That was a nice game. I watched Kate play a little bit of it.
Sonic 3. Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. Shinobi. MFers don't put enough respect on Shinobi. My Hero Academia. One Punch. This is One Punch Man. It's not One Punch Man. Oh, Jump King! <laughs> yes! All right. Big Fist. Game Dill Guess. Okay, Game Dill Guess is always where good wins, uh, good runs go to die. Once I was the king of jumping, now I work at the pizza pizza. You know what I'm talking about? Moxie Fruvis, is this anything? Hmm. Only VIP Daniel knows that one. Dark Souls 2. Okay, one green is fantastic. We follow that up with an anthem. Get your damn hands up. It's a third person game between 2014 and 2019 that is uh, either some combination of shooter role playing adventure. It's Fallout 4. It's later than Fallout 4. It's Assassin's Creed. Origins. Fight the temptation to give up. <laughs> so it's in 2018. We could at least get a green by just naming a game that came out in 2018. FIFA. Hang on. <laughs> NHL. No, okay. Madden. Oh, we got to do it. But I don't know when the FIFA's come out. I think FIFA's same year, right? Oh, FIFA 19. <laughs> Okay, okay. It's not a sports game, which is nice to know. Okay, so we got a green. Hey, Mad Dog Nation, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you, thank you. Much appreciated. You might be wondering why we uh, guess two FIFA games. The reason is because the more greens we get, the more likely it is that our one-time clue gives us something that actually allows us to build off of. So, similarly, we know that it's a single-player game that is also either co-op or multiplayer. But not both. <laughs> so it would be nice if we could get, like, this Red Dead Redemption doesn't have co-op, right? And then we could... Oh, it does have co Okay, give me the clue. Don't give me some bullshit like an engine. It's a shooter adventure. Third person shooter adventure. Border. It's a horrible guess. It's an absolutely horrendous guess. I don't play this shit. This Warframe came out like 2003. It's. Red Dead Redemption 1. It's Command and Conquer Red Alert. It's bullshit. Okay? A couple of things is bullshit. I don't care if Shadow of the Tomb Raider is co-op or multiplayer. It's not. That's a single player only game. Anybody going out there and loading up Shadow of the Tomb Raider multiplayer is not a real human being. So I would like that removed from the, the ledger. I would like that stricken from the ledger. I got nothing against the game. I'm just saying that, that motherfucker is not real. So true. I 
1988 comedy. Hated by the critics, loved by the uh, audience, which means it's probably bad. Three words. Dumb and Dumber. I know it's not because that's like 94, but get something. The sight of a bear running through the woods with bear buttocks probably has some superiors in the history of comedy, but not this week. Weekend at Bernie's. This possibly is the first time in cinematic history that raccoonese has been translated into subtitles. Next clue. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd has been in some terrible movies. John Candy has been in some terrible movies. Now they're in the same absolutely terrible movie. I know this one. Dan Aykroyd wears insane makeup. Um, oh, it's called like Dead. It's not better off dead. Oh, I know that I know this movie. It also stars, I feel like Demi Moore is in it. Next to me. Oh, this is not even the same movie. Oh, is it Spies Like Us? It could just be Spies Like Us. No, The Great Outdoors. <laughs> ah, you got... I was thinking of nothing but trouble. Yes, I was thinking of nothing but trouble. Fair enough. All right, that, I've never seen or I think heard of The Great Outdoors, honestly. Take me to Chrono Photo. What the hell? Is this famous? Is this motherfucker real? I feel like you are... This is like the real life Homer Simpson. And I don't mean that in a, de a derogatory way. Like I feel like this guy is keeping a nuclear power plant online or something like that. This is the real Frank Grimes, exactly. Like, he's not just hitting the button now and then. Like, this dude is like, if these two bars touch, then, like, half of North America becomes completely irradiated. So I'm going to say this is, like, 1977. That's 1993. Okay, well, the real question is, how old is the camera? So I feel like the camera is from 1977. So I'm going to take 5,000 for that. Me in the theater when Gabe Newell announced the sex update for Team Fortress 2. I don't, I don't know this one. It looks like, to me, this looks like the 1950s. So I'm going to say it's 1958. Okay, okay. Oh, brother. <laughs> I've just been trying to think of something to say. I mean, he's literally pulling you in a stroller, man. What do you want me to say? Uh, cool shoes? I was thinking that, too. Those are some cool shoes, man. This definitely is not a good look. I mean, this is a good look, and I hate to say it. This is kind of a good look. This is not a good, altogether not a good look. Either of the individuals separately. Great look as far as I'm concerned. I have no idea. I'm going to say this is 1930. All right. You don't see that many uh, women in bathing caps anymore, huh? It's not a common thing you see these days. We should bring him back. I can't wear a bathing cap because I think it would be a jump scare 
if I took off my bathing cap and then I was bald underneath, I think people would be like, ah! Well, I don't know. This is like pre-1960. I feel comfortable saying that it's pre-1960. I don't know when, though, because it gets like a little spicy in the early 20th century. Give me like a 1952. It's 1923. <laughs> Let's say this is probably 19. Well, no, no, no. Don't be an idiot. You'd have to be an idiot to pick 1917 because it's a color photo and look at the cars. But for a second, I was like, it's definitely 1917. I feel like this could be early 70s in the USSR. Oh, okay. Absolutely horrible performance overall. But, um, hey, you know, we had, there's, there's some positivity in there. Fuck you. This is not a house. This is like a, a, a university building or like a library or something. This is where like the president of a Ivy League school lives on campus or it's a, a bank or something. Yeah. Courthouse. Like, I don't know what this is. This is a $5 million house or, or more. No, never mind. Never mind. It's in Ohio. Shaker Heights, Ohio, suburb of Cleveland. This isn't even the house. This is like a guest house on the back. They got their own tennis court. They got their own swimming pool with the cabanas dripped. And it's still under five milli. Let me get a two milli, knowing that this is in Cleveland. Okay, just checking. It's a mere 11,000 square feet. Pretty understated, honestly. Um, 3.75 million. That's too high. Five beds, six bath. Chairs are facing the right direction. I'm just going to say, if you're this rich, why is your ass living in Ohio? Unless you're, like, is this owned by LeBron James, perhaps? Or <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. Unless you're, like, the governor of Ohio or something. Mayor of Ohio. Um, that's pretty right. It's probably Dave Chappelle's house. Um... 2.8 million dollars? That's too high. Built in 1925. They got the fucking $5,000 Herman Miller chair. Dog, come on. <laughs> I want that. Here's the 2.45 milli for that one. Oh, you're a house of legend. How about that? Take me to Time Guesser. Still cracked on the real estate. Hmm. See, this one is a trick question. Because this is not outdoors. This is inside. So how am I supposed to know? Like, I have no idea. I would be inclined to say, my, my guess is this is art, which tells me that it's probably in Paris, and the dude is wearing Supreme Season 4. So this might be like 2019. I'm going to say this is 19... It's a little crazy. I'm going to say, it's, I think 1962 is good, honestly. It was 1920. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't know. It's just the clothes, man. Monet. Monet was alive in 1920? I thought that fucker lived in like the 1710s. Same. Like, I knew Picasso lived in the 21st century, but Monet? Next, you're going to tell me, like, Leonardo da Vinci died in 1978 or something like that. Sorry, the 20th century, not the, not the 21st century. He 
He did. Grizzly Adams did have a beard. Wasn't Monet the one painting the fucking, like a bowl of fruit or something like that? People were pogging off in like 1907 for bowl of fruit. You're killing me? I, I'm not saying I don't... I'm not saying my opinions on art should be taken as authority. I'm simply saying I don't know anything about art. He made Impressionism. Actually, um, Impressionism was made by Jim Carrey. You ever see Jim Carrey stand up before he got famous? Where his eyebrows go like... You know what I'm... I can't do it. See, that's why he's the master. Okay, this is, this is weird. It's a van that says prisoner transport with the Iowa license plates. Original and famous Bud Tent, established 1947. And then, I'll be honest with you, a ski lift that you would not catch my ass getting on. Oh, you, you puss, you puss. Did you see the video of that uh, Six Flags roller coaster in North Carolina where... Every time the roller coaster went around the bend, the strut was going like, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's no chance, man. I'm not, go I'm not going on this. Because you know this shit is not being maintained as well as Six Flags. They're made to do that? Brother, there was a fucking like 12-inch crack in the strut. We're like one rib fest away from that thing going down and taking the, the entire train with it. Anyway, I, I think this is like Iowa. I'm going to say it's the capital of Iowa. Des Moines shower handle. And I'm going to say it's circa, to me this looks like a 2017 How about that? 2022. Scenes from the Iowa State Fair, the largest state fair in the United States. Fair enough. It's a great picture. Congratulations, Iowa. Take down your, bun, your gun, buddy, and go home. This is London, England. Based on the hats. It's just, again, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with being ignorant as long as you're not confident in your ignorance. I am fairly aware of America's history in Vietnam. I'm not aware of the United Kingdom's participation in the Vietnam War. I feel like the logical take here is that this must be from the Vietnam War. It's very, you know, hippie era coded. So I'm going to say that this is 71 but I don't know. Maybe, maybe they weren't involved in, in Vietnam. Vietnam War protesters. Okay. England also had a cultural revolution in the late 60s. I know. Paul McCartney grew out his hair. George Harrison started taking LSD. Ringo Starr upped his ale intake to six a day instead of four. I've seen, um, I've seen half of Get Back. Ringo Starr rolling up to the practice. Like, as it started, it's just him and Paul McCartney waiting for George Harrison to get out of bed. Ringo Starr is cracking a beer at like 7.15 a.m., sitting down on the, on the damn drum kit. Hey, hey, check this out. Like, he's just, he's ripping it up. Paul McCartney's tortured. What could I have done? What could I, where's John, man? What could I have done? George Harrison's showing up. Hey guys, I had a great idea for a song. It goes like this. Dung, dung, dung. And everyone's like, George, shut up. He's fine. I guess I'll leave the band then. This is the parliament buildings in Ottawa. Bro, they were listed. It's Ottawa Blues Fest 2000, man. 
Holy! I was talking about this yesterday. Ottawa Blues Fest. Blues Fest obviously took place overlooking the Parliament buildings. I don't specifically... Oh, they're, they're right there. I'm going to say we were probably near the National Arts Center then. And this is... I mean, I'm, I got to say it's 2000, baby. 2011. <laughs> Crowds at Ottawa Blues Fest. <laughs> it's so funny. It doesn't look like the year 2000. Like, well, there's a couple of things you could note. One is that's the Nunavut flag, which didn't become a province until... Uh, Wait, 1999. Wait a minute. What's going on? Hold on. Hang on. Chat's saying it says 2001 here. Where? You got scammed? In the top left? Oh, it does say crowds at Ottawa Blues Fest 2001. Then it says 2011. I got scammed, man. Oh, I said 2011 because I'm stupid. <laughs> But did I? No, I thought I said 2000. I said 2000. I didn't say 2011. What is going on, man? This is probably before the 1988 Olympics in Seoul. You got to respect the drip, man. Maybe I'm the asshole for saying this, but like... Why are none of the fuckers with the Olympic torch ever running? They're always like half walking. And I know you're like, it has to travel a long way, but they weren't carrying it the whole time. Like they were, they, they have like a real athlete carry it for like, you know, a thousand kilometers. And then like the mayor of the city carries it for a hundred meters. Like that's it. You do it then? I wouldn't mind, I could carry the Olympic torch for, for a 5K at least. I'm not going to take it much longer than that, but still. Nice dreamer. Running a 5K? Bro, okay, like this is like very streamer coded. 5K is not that hard. 5K is like... It's like a half hour jog. That's a, that's a Maddie Maggiacomo 30 minute Hamilton ride. It's like seven songs. It's no big deal. I'm not saying I can take this shit and carry it for a half marathon. Just a 5K? How many 5K runs have you done? I don't know, like... 200 <laughs> I'm not trying to say it's nothing because like I know there's people that are probably on the treadmill right now doing couch to 5k and are like oh fuck he's he's insulting me but no but like when, once you get there you're fucking there and you just run it then what do you do when you get it you take a day off then you run it tomorrow and then you take a day off then you run it tomorrow then you run it the next day then you take a day off you do like four a week or something like that and then you start doing like a 5K on Monday, then you take Tuesday off, then you do like 9K on Wednesday, then you do like 5K on Thursday, then you take a day off, and then you do, you know, you, then you try to get like a, then you, after a while, you like work it out a little bit, then you get like, you run 5K like five times a week, and then on Sundays, you go out for like a two hour long run or something like that. Anyway. Can you run with your foot condition? Oh, bro, I would beat you in a race. Easy. Easy mode. The only foot condition I have you should be worried about is how, how fast they're moving. I've done 5K in 25 minutes. 30 minutes is doable. What are you, you run splaining here? 30 minutes is not doable. 30 minutes is, uh, it's routine. It's not like you got to be in Olympic shape to do a 30 minute 5K. What are you, and you've done it in 25 minutes? Okay, I've done it in 22 minutes. 25 minutes is doable on an off day. Why are you trying to little bro me here? I'm just trying to, I'm just wondering why this guy's not moving and all of a sudden you're taking shots at me. Twenty minutes, that's pretty fast. I mean, I'm not the best runner of all time. I'm the best cyclist of all time. If you did it in 20 minutes, that's very impressive.
This is not the year 2000. This is 1988 in Seoul. I had a coworker do it in 18. I mean, that's just... You got you to gotta clap your hands for that. You got it spot on. An athlete carrying the Olympic torch. No disrespect. This guy is the treasurer of Seoul. He's not, he's not competing in the Olympics. I'm, it's nice to call him an athlete, but I'm just, I want to avoid confusion. I'm not disrespecting him. I'm just... <laughs> this guy was... He has my hairline. He was not competing in the Olympic Games, okay? I'm not disrespecting him. He was competing in accounting. Final score, 39,790. Motherfucker. <laughs> I can't break 40,000, man. Okay, now for I have spent a lot of time defending houses from chat. You can go off on this one. Now, it, it's a nice house, but it is a McMansion. Like, that is, this. the house is made of triangles. It's more garage than house. It's still nice, like, it's, the backyard is the fucking forest. That's kind of amazing. But it obviously depends where it is. I'm going to start the bidding at 900. Just give me a frame of reference. Okay, it's in Titabawasi Township, Michigan. Daniel, can I get some... Uh, can I get a frame of reference here? Titabawasi Township? It's not Tita, It's not Titaba. It's Titaba. See, see, you go. Da, 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 da. And what my song does is go. Da, 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 da. How are the schools in this district, Chad? Good. They're okay. Who knows? It's America. Okay, how are the private schools in this district? Really good. All right. 550,000. Single family home. Anytime, and I'm making a value judgment about the people that live here, which is not fair. But I guarantee this shit is like 4,000 square feet, and they've got six rooms that they don't do anything with. And they're like, I couldn't live in a place that's smaller than this. I'm, I've been living in. An urban environment for quite some time. Anytime I go to a place where space is not at a premium, people are not using their space wisely, and then they say, I don't know how you live in a place that's that small. Well, you do have to make some adjustments, but one of the things you can do is not pay for like six rooms that you just put dirty clothes in. Like you just, you just fold, like you put your clothes in the hamper, and then you fold them when they come out of the laundry machine, and that's like one room right there. Three hundred and seventy-five thousand. I mean, it's a, this looks like a big house. Okay, okay, we're in there. Four twenty-five. We're zeroing in. Four fifty. Built in two thousand and three. It's actually only twenty-three hundred square feet. That's not that big of a deal. That's my uncle's house. Go, delete the vod. Delete the vod. Chet Giesling's residence. Half a bath. What is a half bath anyway? That's, that's toilet sink, no shower bath, right? That is correct. It's not just like a toilet with no lid or no flush. <laughs> Traveler, okay. Oh, here we go. Traveler's been ruthless today. Or this week. Today, I'd like to go from Liberia to Lesotho. Okay, I can sort of do this for a bit. Prezo, keep your freaking fingers stayed, okay? I know you know all of Africa. You were doing the, I can name all the African countries in 73 seconds or something like that. Congratulations. I haven't done that, okay? So I'm sure you can get it. But I got to work for it. I got I to gotta think a little bit, okay? So from Lesotho... You need to start by just getting out of Lesotho, which requires going to South Africa. And then you go to Mozambique. 
I thought it was here. <laughs> At some point, you're going to pass through the Congo and the Democratic Republic of some such. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Totally fine. We just need to find something in here. Now, from Liberia, we're going to need a, a Senegal. We're going to need a... At some point, we're going to need like a Mali. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were like right there. Um, how about a Ghana? That's fine. It would just, uh, well, it kind of is not fine. How about a Togo? Nigeria. Let me think about it for a second. Cote d'Ivoire. Ivory Coast. There we go. We, we've made a, a connection. How about the Guinea Bissau? <laughs> Guinea Oh, <laughs> Djibouti. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm washed. It's, I mean, it's not makeable. Any chance we can get Chad involved in this one? Are you kidding me? They don't touch? How about the Central African Republic? That one hurts. That one hurts. We needed to go South Africa, Mozambique, Zambia. Okay, so if we got the Zambia connection, we also needed a Cameroon. And I always forget Benin, man. I always forget Benin. But then it's time for my favorite of all of the dulls, <laughs> Puck Doku, which nobody but me likes at all. Name a player that played for New Jersey and Montreal. Jay, are you here? It could be Brian Gianta, but I got to go with Scott Gomez for this one. Canadian legend Scott Gomez. New York Rangers and Montreal. I don't think I could use Scott Gomez again, but he did play for both. Should have thought of that one. Um, okay, just you, Montreal and LA. Give me Philip Danault. Thank you. Now let me think about this for a second. LA, uh, hang on. Columbus and New York. Let me get a Rick Nash for that one, please. LA and Columbus. Let me get a Jeff Carter. New Jersey and Columbus. I got to think about that one for a second. I got to think about that one for a second. And then Montreal and New York should have like a ton of overlap, but I, nothing's coming to mind immediately. So I just got to, I got to think about it for a second. New Jersey, 200 PIMS in a single season. Give me the legend, Ken Danico. New York Rangers, LA, LA Kings, 200 PIMS in a single season. Any chance we could get a Marty McSorley on that one? Oh, <laughs> all righty. New York Rangers, 200 PIMS in a single season. How about uh, the, the man himself, Sean Avery? Oh, he didn't cross. He didn't cross 200. Okay, New Jersey, Columbus. Think about it. Who are the most well-known players in Columbus Blue Jackets his history? Am I crazy to think Jason Arnott played a little bit for the Blue Jackets? I think I am. You should be able to get Montreal, New York. Didn't Jean Beliveau go to New York or something? Or go from New York to Montreal? Andy Bathgate. Andy Moog. Mike Richter. Brian Leach. Ah, Alexei Kovalev. Welcome to the party, pal. Okay, that's a gimme. Now, let me think about this. Columbus, New Jersey. 
Brian Gianta, Bobby Holik, <laughs> Scott Stevens, Martin Broder, no shot. Mark Denis, Rick Nash. Rick Nash. I'm sorry to say they just don't have a history of like that many noteworthy players. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Columbus. Pierre-Luc Dubois for 17 minutes. I think my best shot is going to be who's the most annoying New York Ranger of all time. I mean, 200 pims in a single season is crazy. No, I mean, this might be our best shot, man, because we're only going to get one more shot. Blue Jack has only been in the league for like 25 years, and they, I mean, I just got to think about it, okay? There, there's, I'm assuming for every single one of these ones, there's a real obvious one. Patrick Eliash. Scott Niedermeyer. Ken Danico. Jamie Langenbrunner. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to pass up on that one. 200 pims on the Rangers is also throwing me for a loop, man. Did Tiger Williams play for you? No. All right. All right. I'll, I'll take it. Let me, let me view some stats. Clarkson. Oh, Ty Domi Pay played for the Rangers. <laughs> oh. And Clarkson. Jeremy? Average score 5.7, though, and we got 7. So I'm still feeling pretty good. Still feeling pretty good about that. I don't understand a single thing you just said. We beat the average. That's the important part. 